Hello everyone, welcome back to the Earth Tones Girl channel. My name is Denise and this is the first episode of 2024. I am so happy to be back here with you all. I have so much to share. The year is off to a great start and uh, I'm going to tell you all about it. <laughs> everybody um welcome back to the channel again i am so happy to be here with you all today uh where do i even begin um how have you all been i hope that the year has started off kindly and gently for you <laughs> hope it's off to a good start um we had a really lovely break um uh, oh and thank before i even go any further thank you so much to everybody um for watching Vlogmas and for watching the last episode. Uh, it was a really short one, but you all were so enthusiastic about it. So thank you so much. And um, yeah, so we had a really great break. That wonderful time between Christmas and New Year's is just so uh, relaxing. And, and a part of me sort of can't wait to get into the new year, but yet I enjoy that relaxing, quiet sort of fuzzy period, like that recovery period, as I like to call it. Um, and it was too short. It really, really was too short. I, I would have liked another couple of days, just a couple of days, and just a little bit more time with the kids and a little bit more time to prep a few things for the new year. But you know what? Time waits for no one, and you just got to put your sneakers on and run and keep up. So... Um, so yeah, so we're now into it. We are 13 days into the new year. Oh my gosh, when did that happen? I was hoping to have been back the first Friday of the month. Um, I think we're now at the second Friday of the month, so I'm a, I'm a day late, but it's all okay. And it, the year, like I said, this year has started off, I really feel like I hit the ground running, but in a really, really great, great way. And... My big news my, to start off with is I am now teaching a knitting and crochet class at my son's school. <laughs> um, talk about reinforcing my word for the year, which we'll get to, uh, or phrase for the year, which we'll get to in a little bit. Um, I've wanted to do this for so long. Now, my daughter graduated from the school last year and she started there in... Uh, kindergarten. So from kindergarten to eighth grade, what is nine years that we've been there? And my son started um, kindergarten in 2020. And I'm always knitting. <laughs> Every day at pickup, I'm, I'm just kind of walking over to the parking lot and I've got my knitting in my hands or I will get there a little early and I'll sit in the little grotto outside of the school and I will knit. Um, I sit on the stairs knitting. I've gone to events at the school knitting and it's just always in my hands, always. Um, so everybody's come to know that about me. I think they almost don't recognize me. They're like, what, you're not working on anything today? It's almost, it's the exception when I don't have something in my hands, when I'm not making something. And um, I've the kids are always so fascinated. It almost feels like a little pipe piper type of thing. And they come over and they're really curious and they're watching my hands and they would just, they're fascinated by it. and. I just thought it would be so wonderful to teach children. And I've taught my daughter, I've taught my son, and um, but I think to have a structured class is something I really, really wanted to do. So just before the end of the school year, or the break for the holiday, I approached the principal of the school and she's actually, yes, she's the principal and you know she's got her position of authority, but she's also really, really cool and down to earth and wonderful. So we talk and chat all the time. And I went into her office and I said, I, I just, I want to ask you a question about something I've been thinking about. And she says, well, I wanted to ask you a question also. 
And I said, okay, well, you go first. And she says, would you be interested in maybe teaching a class, like a knitting class or a crochet class or some type of making class here? And I just stared at her like, are you serious? <laughs> I said, that was going to be my question to you. So that's how it started. And she was like, oh my gosh, she was so excited. And she runs over and she grabs me the form and I have to fill out this form and the thing and the thing and blah, blah, blah. And we were both bursting with excitement. I prepped during the break and oh my gosh, it was just so wonderful. So this past Monday, the 8th, uh, my kids went back to school on the 3rd of January. So it was a short week. It was Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So I spent that week and then the weekend prepping for the class on Monday. Um, and it was just lovely. I, I bought all, I ordered all of the supplies for the kids and I didn't know who was going to want to knit or crochet. Um, I had 10 kids or I, I allotted for 10 children. The morning of, I was told I had 12. So I ended up making more bags. So I made project bags for all of the kids for their supplies. Everybody got the same bag, the same big woolies, thick and quick, fisherman colored yarn, and everybody got knitting needles and everybody got a crochet hook. Um, and they were so excited. I mean, they all walked into the room. I had to collect them and we all walked into the room together. And the way the room was laid out, as you just saw, was so user-friendly. It was just perfect, uh, perfect setup. And we started and they were so delighted. They were so excited. They were asking questions and then, you know, they're, they're concentrating really hard and like they're really focused and, you know, so Mr. DeSantis, do you do it this way? And is it, is it that way? And when you flip, do you flip like this or do you flip like this? And they were so... So cute. The youngest was eight and the oldest was 13. So I had from third grade to eighth grade and I could not have been happier. It was such an amazing way to start the year. Um, so yeah, it was, I'm, I'm like, I feel like I'm glowing from it because I'm so happy. The only downside is the class is only an hour. And at the end of the hour, they, they all of them, I said, God, girls, we're all done. And they're like, what is an hour already? They were so bummed that the hour was over. And we have um, a holiday this coming Monday, the 15th. So I'm teaching every Monday after right after school. And we have a holiday this Monday um, for Martin Luther King Day. So there's no class and they are so disappointed. So I said, don't worry about it. I sent some video links to their parents so that the kids can, you know, if they forget how to do something, I really watched the videos. They were teaching the same way that I would. The videos are geared toward children. So they have that little buffer until we meet again on the 22nd. Uh, so yeah, I'm teaching girls, lots and lots of little girls, little girls. For those of you who know Carol Burnett from Annie, you may get that reference. <laughs> and, um, so much fun, so much fun. And so segue to, I think the first or second day after the new year, I put up a post about the things that I wanted um, for myself for the new year. And I don't ever do, I haven't done resolutions in, oh my gosh, I don't know, ages and ages and ages. And I prefer achievable intentions. I have an intention. Is this really something I can do? Is this really, sorry, I feel like I'm earthquaking here. Is this something that I can really do? Is it something I can achieve? Not necessarily immediately, because it doesn't all have to be done in January, which I think a lot of people think they have to do these things, these big grand changes all in the same month, like right at the start. And I don't, I don't see it that way. I see it as something I can work on all year. So my achievable, three of my achievable intentions are, I'm looking at my notes as usual, more sewing, more knitting. I know some of you are like, how much more knitting? But more knitting and more books. So my sewing is off to a great start because I made these bags for the kids. Uh, just a simple, simple drawstring bag really quick and easy. I only put a draw the drawstring on one side. I didn't even do like a double sided cinch, um, just one side. And uh, the kids were even delighted, go going back to that for a minute, the kids were even delighted that they got to keep the bags. They're like, wait, the bags are ours? Like, are you sure? 
Like, we can keep them? <laughs> Do we give them back at the end? Like, <laughs> I'm like, don't you guys are, I mean, like, it's, it's a gift. It's a gift. You all can have it. Um, they were so, so cute. But anyway, so I feel like the year started great with more, I got the sewing off and running. Uh, and there's a really great embroidery project. So by sewing, yes, definitely project bags and things like that, but um, also hand sewing. And there's a really, really great sewing project that I discovered, and here comes the song, <laughs> um, that I discovered on Instagram. I'm, I'm not going to show it to you yet. I'll, I'll save it for another episode because I really want to get into that. So, but I've, I've started that also and I'm hand sewing again. Oh my gosh. There is a piece that I get from knitting that very little else gives me except sewing my hand. I forgot how much I enjoy that, how soothing it is. It is so much slower even the knitting, much slower for me than knitting. And I just, I love it. So I can't wait to share that with you, but that again, later in the, another episode and more knitting. That may seem a little crazy, but I spend so much time and I want to spend the time. I spend so much time um, recording and editing and working on tutorials, um, doing things at the kids' schools. And, and so, oh, someone left the most beautiful comment do be on the PTA, do the things at the kids school because they're only going to be young, but so long. And I can always be here. I can't always do that with them. So that really spurred me on. And, um, so thank you, <clears throat> excuse me. Thank you so much for the person who left that message for me. And so all of that said, there are all of these things, but I do want to knit more. I love it no surprise, and more sweaters, more socks, more socks. And I think by more socks, I mean, I tend to go down the rabbit holes all the time with, let me tweak the heel, let me change this, let me do that. And while I still love that, there's times when I don't, it's okay to take off the teacher hat and just knit a sock for the fun and joy of just knitting a sock. And I want to do a little bit more of that. Not saying there's not going to be tutorials, don't get me wrong, <clears throat> because I do have two pairs of socks to show you and there's already a tweak in those. Like I'm saying all of this, but I'm like, yeah, am I really going to stick with it? <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll talk about the socks in one second. So more knitting, more sewing, more knitting, and more books. We're going to talk about books and a book app and a bunch of things in just a second. So let me go grab the socks and um, I will show those to you. I'm madly in love with them. <laughs> uh, so I just said, I just said that I just want to knit socks for the love of knitting socks. And that is, and while I do have a pair to show you that are tweaks a little bit, um, that's exactly what I did with this pair. These were my last socks of 2023. And I think they may be the most beautiful, one of the most beautiful pairs I have ever made. Ta-da! Can we just, can you guys just take that in for just a second? I mean, oh my goodness. I, I don't, here I am. I don't have any more. It's for how beautiful these are. This, these are the 2020, this is the Cozy Knitter 2023 24 stripe Advent Skein socks. Whew, that was a mouthful. <laughs> so this was her Advent Skein for last year. And ta-da, 24 stripes exactly in this sock. Now, how did I do that? because I know I'm going to get that question in the comments. It is pure coincidence. My foot just happens to be the right size. I, I'm very grateful for that. I am a seven and a half and my foot just happens to be the right size to accommodate the full 24 stripes in one sock. Now, what I did here, I think to accommodate that for yourself, you might have to play a little bit with how long you make the leg so that you can end with the 24th color. So is it doable no matter your foot size? Absolutely. 
Absolutely. I was just able to get 12 on 12 stripes on the leg and then exactly 12 on the foot. You can tweak that to get all the tw all 24. You can make the leg shorter, you can make a deeper cuff, you can make a deeper um, or more more use more contrasting color for the toe, any combination thereof to make it fit. But so it's 12 stripes uh, and I started right where I was supposed to with the first color here. And it's 12 stripes on the foot, on the leg, and then exactly 12 on the foot. And <sighs> love them. I love them so much. I used my sock exploration pattern, which is basically my go-to vanilla sock pattern. And didn't tweak anything, didn't do anything. I just knit them as is, love them. And the it came with the contrasting cream colored skate. It, it automatically comes with that. You didn't have to ask it or it wasn't like an additional add-on or anything like that. So I do have some of this left over. I actually have another full repeat left over. And I, of, I think I'm just gonna do um, mitts with them, like fingerless mitts, which is what I've done in the past with the others because I want these colorways to be seen and I think hands are the best way to do that. <laughs> and it's really not enough to make, I guess I could make another pair of socks, but it's not enough necessarily for a hat or a scarf or a cowl or anything like that. So I really want to do mittens, hand warmers, fingerless mitts or fingerless hand warmers with the rest. So first effort, last FO of 2023. Let's just stare at them for a minute. I know, just take it all in. I love them so much. <laughs> So there we go. So let me pop these off and let's get into the next color, the next pair rather. So these, so let's, let's jump into books. I'm all over the place. So let's just keep up with me here. So something I noticed I started doing, um, maybe last summer, maybe midsummer, I guess I started doing this sort of unintentionally, or maybe I guess intentionally I started knitting, um, socks or I picked colorways to sort of match the books I was knitting and um why I don't really know <laughs> it's just it was just a thing I was just why not try to match them and um it started with me matching a colorway to the silo trilogy that I knit which is wool dust and shift those three books and it's the silo trilogy by Hugh Howie I think I'll, I'll put it down in the show notes for you. But anyway, so yeah, I, I, I was listening to my audiobooks um, and just kept matching. And I, the first book I listened to for this year, so I've already finished an audiobook for 2024. Um, I listened to Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shannon Van Pelt. Shannon Van Pelt, hold on, let's check the notes one second, because my mind, my, my memory's terrible. Yes, Shelby Van Pelt. Um, I started it on January 3rd, I finished it yesterday. Uh, speechless. It, it was so good and so touching and such a unique, different story. And a friend of mine, a really dear friend of mine, kept recommending this book and she kept, have you read it yet? Have you read it yet? Have you read it yet? And I was like, no, 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 no. I haven't read it. I haven't read it. She's like, what? <laughs> Just read the book. It's so fantastic. So fast forward to, I discovered this book tuber um, called Christy Ann Jones. She has a um, YouTube channel and a Patreon and all of that. And I joined her Patreon and she's I just love how she talks about books. I love the books that she talks about. Um, some alternative, like not alternative, but speculative fiction. That is a big term that she uses and realistic fish fiction or fiction set in sort of semi present day, maybe the past. Anyway, all of these different genres. And I just find the way she talks about books riveting. So started following along with her and she talked about remarkably bright creatures. And when I told my friend about it, like, oh, I found this booktuber and she mentioned the book and she's like, oh, so now you're gonna read it because she told you to read it? <laughs> it's like, okay, I'm sorry, you got me. Okay, okay, and I bowed my head and, but still hadn't read it. And 
or listen to it. And New Year's Day, it was either New Year's Day or the day or January, the January 1st or January 2nd, she sent me a New York Times, my friend sent me a New York Times article about the book. And I was like, all right, you know what? <laughs> Obviously, she and Christiane Jones and the universe are all telling me that I need to read this book right or listen to this book right now. So I did. And about halfway, I don't even think it was as far as halfway, about a quarter of the way into the book, I texted my friend and said, okay, with head bowed, I said, I, I apologize for doubting. I will never doubt you again. I am in love with this book already. Don't want it to end. And honestly, I probably could have listened to it in like two or three days and been done. But I, I sort of dragged it out because I didn't want it to end. It was just so lovely. And it's not for everybody. It's not. Um, and it's a story about the relationship between this older woman named Tova and an octopus named Marcellus. Yes, I said octopus, for those of you that may not be familiar with the book. Um, and it seems very far-fetched and very unrealistic, but it worked. And it worked on such a touching level. Again, I, I just, I absolutely, absolutely loved it. That said, I do think it's the kind of book that is better served in an audiobook than a physical book because the narrator who did the voice of Marcellus the octopus just nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. The narration was lovely. The voices were lovely. Marcellus's voice, like I can hear it even now in my head. It was perfect, perfect casting. <clears throat> so well done. So I want to share a lot more of my books. And that was a, an intention I had last year. And I don't really know why that sort of got kicked to the curb. I really don't know why. And I, I wanted to do a newsletter and realized, eh, that's not really me either. So I'm just going to talk about it here. I'm just going to talk about them here. So that is my first book of 2024. And while I was listening to that book, I cast on a new pair of socks on New Year's Eve. Did I cast them on New Year's Eve? New Year's Eve or New Year's Day, and I finished them. I actually finished the books and the socks yesterday. And the socks, the coloring in the socks, here they are. Ah, I love them so much. I'm such a sentimental sap, oh my gosh. But the story itself, I, no spoilers, absolutely no spoilers, I will not do that. But the story starts sort of saddish. That's all I'm gonna say. And which sort of, and a little bit dark, which is kind of how the sock started. Beautiful, so beautiful. But this very quiet, quiet sort of muted story and that's how these started. And then as the story continues, it gets more and more hopeful. And you're, you see that something could potentially happen and you're just hoping against hope that it happens. And things are getting brighter and brighter and brighter as the socks were getting brighter and brighter. And even though the colors are still so muted, someone called it a muddy rainbow when I posted them on, uh, my friend Sarah referred to them as a muddy rainbow. And I think that's a great term. I kind of refer to them as a, as a muted rainbow. They're very colorful without being bright. And that's what I love. I love colorful, but without brightness. And that's the socks. Um, uh, the, the book, the socks, loved it all. So anyway, let's talk about the socks. These are also an advent skein. This is Woolens and Nosh, my dear friend Michelle. Woolens and Nosh, 20... 23 advent skein also 24 stripes but she does this amazing if you saw her her skein from last year which i'm working on of course i don't have it here with me but i'll be i'll probably finish those by the next episode um excuse me oh my goodness her last episode her last skein from last year almost had a stained glass effect so this is her third year doing them the first year the contrasting color uh, and the repetitive color was white. Last year, it was a deep, deep purple that almost had a quick glance, almost has a brownish look to it, but it's definitely purple. And this year, it's this gray, and 
Oh, I just, I could not love these anymore. Just, is that going to focus? Focus, focus. There we go. Oh, look at that. Just absolutely stunning. So what I did for the sharp-eyed among you, let's just zoom in there for a second. What I did, if you notice, look at the heel. So, used the skinny yarn, absolutely gorgeous. Used the Shadow Wrap Short Row Heel, but I added a mini heel flap adjustment. I don't think, I think I've talked about this before and wanted to show you a pair of socks, couldn't find any, so I just knit them. And I knit, last year's Woolens and Nosh Advent with just a shadow wrap heel. And I did this year's with the shadow wrap heel and a mini heel flap adjustment. The mini heel flap adjustment, let me put one of these down. The mini heel flap adjustment, is that gonna focus for me? There, there we go. No, it's not focusing, focus. There we go. Okay, so the mini heel flap adjustment, what it does is you, are knitting the short row heel, you're knitting a mini heel flap. So what that does, and it could be any number of rows from usually three, four to eight rows, um, the same way that you would a heel flap and gusset, but it's a short one. And what it does is it gives you room across the instep, significant amount of room across the instep. So for those of you that like a shadow wrap heel or like a short row heel, but it, it, there's too much pulling across the instep, and I do get a little bit of pulling. I don't know if my feet are changing, but I do tend to get a little bit of pulling when I use the Woolens and Nosh because, let me move the sock for a minute. This yarn, her yarn is a finger, it's classified as a fingering weight, but I find it a little plumper than a fingering weight, but yet not as plump as a sport. So it's lace, fingering, sport, DK, worsted, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it just falls in that little tiny, it's such a tiny, tiny gray area between fingering and sport. So I drop down to 60 stitches instead of my usual 64. But by doing that, it does give me the little bit of pulling it does give the little bit of pulling across the instep here. So I tried it with the heel flap, then did the, sh the shadow wrap short row heel and the fit and then continued down the foot with the rest of the sock. It is incredible, the difference in the fit. I absolutely love the way it fits, love the way it looks. It's just a slightly, it gives you more room. It just gives you more room. Now. The mini heel flap adjustment is by Mina Phillip, who is the knitting expat. It is, I believe it's a part of her vanilla sock recipe. I don't know if she has it as a freestanding, if the, if the heel flap, mini heel flap adjustment is a freestanding. I will link to everything down below for you. I have reached out to Mina. She's an incredible sock designer. Mina is, she's been sock designing for a few, for years now. She's an incredible designer, incredible maker, incredible teacher. Um, we've both taught together at Vogue. She, with Vogue Knitting Live, she's just amazing. And I reached out to her. She does have some tutorials on her YouTube channel. And I asked her if, what her thoughts were on me teaching or doing a tutorial on this heel flap, mini heel flap adjustment paired with the shadow wrap short row heel. And she does not mind if I teach it in person, but she'd rather me not do a tutorial. No problem at all. Respect that, fully understand, no problem. It was, it, the discussion didn't go any further. So I know she does plan on doing a tutorial for the mini heel flap adjustment. I don't know what her timing is, all of that said, if you purchase her pattern, it is so crystal clear, even for a novice knitter, a new sock knitter, that I don't think that there is such a dire need for a video tutorial. She has pictures, she does step by step, it is crystal clear, you don't have to cut your main yarn when you're doing this, there's, you only have the end of the contrasting color to weave in. The instructions are spot on perfect. 
So I again, again, I will link to her down below to the to the pattern to her YouTube channel. Um, and we'll just wait until she has the time to do a video tutorial. Highly recommend it if you need that little extra bit of room. It is amazing. So that is my second FO. Love it. Love it. Love the book. Just off to a great start. So, <laughs> um, so yes, again, just to reiterate, I will not be doing a tutorial on that. Um, I just don't think it's, it's needed. And again, it is, I am respecting someone else's pattern, pattern rights, intellectual property, all of it. Um, I feel like that needs to be honored a lot more in this field, in this, in this industry. I'm not getting on my soapbox. I'm just saying that I get it. I get it. If you want to do it, the pattern is perfect. Perfect. And if you do need pattern support, I know that Mina is able to provide that. Um, I will help if I can without full on giving it away. Um, so yeah, give it a try, give it a go. So what else? Um, there's so many other things to share with you. I, I received a, I didn't receive, well, I kind of gave it to myself. <laughs> I gave myself a Christmas present. Um, and I will share that with you also in another episode. Um, it was, it was a little extravagant, but I love it madly and can't wait to share that with you. So that's another big thing. Um, and there's a couple of other things. Uh, I'm working with Twi twice sheared sheep um, in a really unique way. So I will share that with you in an upcoming episode. I'm just giving you highlights of what's coming over the next couple of weeks and months. Um, things I'm excited about, more tutorials, more sock knitting, more books, more everything. Oh, let's talk about the book app really quick. So the book app that I download is called, that I downloaded to my phone is called um, Storygraph. So I listen to, I exclusively listen to books. There is the rare occasion that I will physically read a book. Doesn't happen very often. Um, so I wanted a way to track how many hours I'm knitting and just get more stats, I guess, on my reading, just to track it a little bit more. And Storygraph does that. It provides a platform for you to, if you're on Goodreads, which I was for about a minute, but if you really have been on Goodreads, you can import your data from Goodreads to Storygraph, everything you've read past years, and or you can start from scratch like I am and put all of your data. You can have a TBL, for me it's a TBL or a TBR, to be read or to be listened to list, and you can curate that, you can curate the app itself will start to make suggestions for you um, of books that you might be interested in. And a lot of their suggestions are not the mainstream suggestions. They're not the New York Times bestseller list type suggestions. And I find them so interesting. So right now, again, I've only been on the app. It's 13th of January. I've only been on the app a couple of weeks, but I'm loving it so far. So Remarkably Great Bright Creatures has now been logged in. Uh, I am in the middle of reading, physically reading, a book to my father. My dad, um, I guess you could say he's legally blind. He can still see certain things in the distance. He knows his own environment, but um, but his eyesight, he, he can't read anymore. And I gave books to everybody for Christmas, and I gave my dad two books, and he kind of looked at me like, well, hello. <laughs> I said, I know, Dad, I know, but... The second half of your gift is that I'm going to come and read these to you. Something else I want to practice. I love reading out loud. Um, and I think maybe in another life down the line, I there's the thought of maybe narrating books. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I love the thought of it. So I just thought, you know what? Why not practice with my dad? He, I would love to spend more time with him, even more time. And he loves books. I think I got my love of them from him, so why not spend time with him and read to him, which serves us both. So we are currently reading together, Address Unknown. Oh dear, look, 
Hold on. Now that I have the new setup here, I can actually look things up on my phone. <laughs> so hold on one second. Uh, da, 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 da. Hang on. Address on. Address unknown. A novel. Okay, so it's address unknown. A novel by Catherine Cressman Taylor. She's uh, she's the author of the book, and I'm listening, of course, to the um. I'm also listening to the audiobook, but I'm reading it to my dad. So, Catherine Cressman Taylor, address unknown. So I've already entered that into Storygraph as well, and you can have a start date, an end date. Um, you can categorize it as an audiobook, as a physical book on your Kindle. It, it's just it has a lot of features to it, and. I know that Audible is trying to add stats and be a little bit more um, competitive with Goodreads and now Storygraph. So uh, it doesn't feel like, oh my gosh, I've got something else to do or another social media because I've kept it private. I'm not sharing it with anyone. It's just, it's just for me. It's just a tracking app for my reading for myself. So if you are interested in that, go and check it out. I really wanted to share that with you. And let's take a breath. I've been talking a lot. <laughs> I just wanted to share my phrase of the year. Um, I'll close with that. Last year, it was remember your why. And I talked about that a little bit in the last episode for 2023 and how important the phrase was to me and how it applies to just about every area of my life. And... I have decided, you know what? It's not broke. I'm not fixing it. Nowhere is it written that I can't reuse the same phrase. So I am carrying that same phrase with me into this year. It just serves me on a lot of levels and it is the kind of reminder that I want daily. I even have a sticker of it on my laptop and that I got from Big Moods, if anyone's interested. And um, I decided to keep it, but I've added to it. I've added to it a little, and I just added resolve to remember my why. Why resolve? Um, and I actually wrote this down so I would get the wording right. One definition for resolve is firmness of purpose or intent. So my intention is, after seeing the effects of that phrase and reminder last year, my intention is even stronger to remember my why for this year. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm sticking to that. I'm sticking to that. There's to try not to falter, to try not to give in to a lot of outside influence to do more of what works for me. All of these phrases and things I talk about all the time here on the channel. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited for 2024. I know there's gonna be some, some bumps, some speed bumps, some hard moments. Um, yesterday, I had a bit of a hard moment with um, someone who's very, very dear to me. And it's, it's all okay. It's, it's, again, it's just remembering my why. And, and with this person, um, remembering why I'm there for, for him. Um, he's the son of my friend, of a very, of a friend, not just a friend, but like a sister. And, um, he needed help and he needed to talk. And I dropped everything to do that for him. And, my why is in that moment was not only to be there for him, but to do what I know his mother would want me to do. So it's even on that level, on something so deeply personal, and, and I'll stop there, um, or I'll be sobbing, but I'll stop there. But even on that personal level, remembering my why and making time in a moment for something or someone and remembering my why here on the channel and with teaching at the school and with my sock knitting and with everything. So not to end on a preachy note, um, 
but just sharing my thoughts, just sharing my thoughts and, and, and how excited I am. So I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Um, I tried not to make it too long. Um, lots more coming. Uh, and I will see you all again really soon. Please share in the comments with me how things are going for you, um, how you're doing, what you want to work on this coming year, in this new year, what your intentions are, what your, if you choose resolutions, what your resolutions are, uh, what your plans are, your hopes, your dreams, just drop it all in the comments for me because I love, love reading them. So uh, again, that's all for today, everybody. I will see you all again really soon, hopefully next week. <laughs> Fingers, fingers, arms, legs, toes crossed. And um, yeah, I'll see you all again really soon. Bye, everyone. And thank you so much for spending some time with me today. Bye, everybody. Mwah.